Andy is finally done with Gary. Zach and Fatima are stronger than ever. And Karen is trying to make sure everything is okay at the hospital. What's good, y'all? It's your sister Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Sisters video. And in this video, we're breaking down the premiere episode from season five. Because, you know, I'm your good sis. You let her talk TV with. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my sister's breakdowns. And without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into this episode because it was all over the place, y'all. We pick up back at the law firm, you know, the season finale, we got to see Gary show up at the law firm talking about that bitch ain't my lawyer talking to Fatima because he's meeting with Hayden because he wants to sue Andy for this penthouse back because she has decided to ignore him. They had their little run-ins towards the end of last season. Okay, cool, 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 cool. And we pick right up with Andy and Fatima in her office, attempting to get some work done, but Fatima cannot sit on the fact that he just called her a bitch and then they're also trying to figure out like why is he here after andy spots him so once fatima reveals that andy thinks that this is a good idea to go over there and confront him and honestly i will say this i was very much so surprised about the dialogue that andy had for gary in the office with hayden aside from hayden taking little jabs at them and being disrespectful as he would be because he's a raggedy ass incel and should be annihilated but you know i'm i digress let's talk about andy and gary here andy makes the point of like they are not good for each other they could love each other all they want but not actually need to be together because they're not good for each other she says that she sold her place so that she could pay for the taxes on the penthouse so she won't have nowhere to go however she is willing to give him everything back um for him not to sue and them to just completely go their separate ways and gary makes this little half-ass attempt or plea of like but i love you and i just can't fathom the idea of like losing you and that's what it is for you i don't really believe that gary ever loved andy i think gary loved the setup of her being his mistress and him having his cake and eating it too in that regard then he loved or became addicted to the control that he had over her and this this entire time has been a game for him so while he is using the L word as his polite excuse for all of his actions, all of his controlling, manipulative, dis disrespectful, and abusive, abusive actions, in all honesty, what, what it really is came out in this conversation and he just can't fathom releasing that control. He can't fathom letting her go because she belongs to him in his mind all off the strength of just because he desires her to be within his control. That's it, that's all. And that became so blaringly clear to me in their conversation. And y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw this out there. Cheeto, I don't give a damn about that little single tear that came gracing down the side of your damn face. You don't love that girl. This is another manipulation tactic. Even though it does seem like he just like, all right, well, you're right. I'm going to go ahead and concede. But you know what? I'm still on his damn head. And I still believe that there is no redeeming Gary Borders. Still go to hell. You know why? Because he's going to let her give all of the stuff back, even though he knows that he has been a complete and utter menace. That damn penthouse, that damn Bentley or whatever the hell is supposed to be, a Rolls Royce, all of that should be pain and suffering settlement, okay? Pain and suffering settlement. Decide to go y'all separate ways. Y'all not good for each other. That would tell me that you loved her just maybe a, a tidbit. Maybe you're like, okay, the fact that you're conceding, like, all right, we're going to go ahead and let this go. I'm going to stop wreaking havoc over your life, and I'm going to let you keep all this stuff because I got plenty of money. It's not like I'm hurting for what I bought you. Be clear. That would actually tell me that. But because you don't, you still trying to take from this woman who you've been taking from since you met her and again go to hell gary borders but cheeto i see you all right y'all and from there before i get to the crew de gras of this episode which was what i was actually here for let's talk about the things that actually don't damn matter calvin for whatever reason now has animosity for q he should have been had the animosity but you're also part of the reason why this little stray cat is living up in y'all's damn house q gives a call to logan about you know arresting them and he's going to also now good job basically giving him attaboy and he going to set him up for a, a job so that he can get back on his feet Q the fact that you just had Maurice arrested you literally set him up on some entrapment type stuff and you in the damn house that he pays rent for cooking and 
kikiing as if nothing went down. Like, you think you actually gonna be able to stay here? It's the audacity for me. Is it because you fine? Like, is it the fineness that has infected his brain to make him think that this is actually an option? Like, I don't get it. This is like Gary Borders level menacing. I don't understand. And Calvin comes in, um, rushing, which rushes uh, Q off the phone, right? And now all of a sudden he has this little random ass animosity and he wants to move out. And I'm like, Tyler Perry, I get it. We wanted to get here, but you have literally no smooth lines or journeys or transitions into this stuff. Just an episode ago, uh, or two episodes ago, Calvin was drunk as hell, um, being taken care of by this boy and just like Calvin was like, okay, well, let's not be too harsh. Let's help him out. Yada, yada, yada. But now he immediately is coming in here hot, ready for him to go and deciding that he going to move out. Sir, why are you going to move out? You actually pay half the damn bills. You could literally just throw this little raggedy ass stray cat out. You do know that, right? And while he doing that, he's all distracted and he can't even see that he needs to be answering the phone. See, you might not be gay, Calvin, but... But I'm questioning your black card at this point because you know that you're getting calls from a correctional facility and you don't answer and you black. Somebody that you love and know is trying to get, get your attention and you ain't answering the phone. And then you are dumb enough to mention that to Q, which I guess, okay, cool. You don't know that Q actually set Maurice up. But answer the damn phone, Calvin. Like, this storyline is progressing and it's about to take a turn and we're about to go on the roller coaster. I think that, that I don't like the damn storyline to begin with. I think Q is completely unnecessary and there's no way in hell that after he did all he did, somebody should really have let him in like this to be able to compromise them again and victimize them again. But here we are. The least that Calvin could do is have his head actually on a swivel. You come in here with all this animosity, you ready to move out, and you don't like this boy being here. Also, you don't want to answer the phone for a correctional facility. We are black. We don't know who could be in there. Meemaw could be in, in jail, and you ain't answering the damn phone. Another storyline that is not that I don't care about it, but it's also going off the complete and utter rails, and I think I'm about to check out for real, for real, Danny and damn Preston. Preston, didn't you say you was leaving last episode, baby? Just go. Because you coming back here with this soft story about Mindy or Kingly or whatever the hell the damn girl name is from elementary school who is supposed to be your long lost love or basically the hoe that you gonna settle for back at home and because Danny won't let you catch her, you just gonna go ahead and cut your losses because I guess you, like many men, decide that at a certain age and time in your life you need to be settled down and married and starting a family and all of that and because Danny ain't let you catch her within this time frame, you gonna cut your losses and go back to her. Sir, that girl don't want to be your second choice. And Danny don't want to be manipulated into a damn relationship with you. You and this ultimatum can go straight to hell, Preston. Straight. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Get the hell. Preston, I have been on your side for the most part. There's been a, certain things that you got to check. But I feel like Danny could have definitely provided more grace, provided more help, provided more context. Now, that is her responsibility to educate you on black women. But because she does have feelings for you and because you did actually try, back was as hell as some of your tries might have been, because you were actually trying, I do think that she could have met you halfway. But this is where you take all of my grace, all of my empathy, all of my support of you and throw it out the window because what you're not going to do is emotionally manipulate and emotionally abuse a black woman into being into a relationship with you. That is the wrong answer, dummy. And I'm done with you. Now, this storyline matters, but I think we got a little bit too much of it in this episode because the team has their own show. It's a cute moment of Zach taking Fatima back to the parking lot where she hit him when he was on the bike and they met. And then they agree that regardless of whatever happens in their relationship, they can always come back to this place and reset so that they can refocus on their love and all that. It's so cute, cute, cute. But y'all have been eclipsing these sisters on this damn show and y'all already have y'all spinoff. So we don't need it. We could have saw this one's a team, baby. But y'all cute still. They give us all of 3.2 seconds of Sabrina arguing with this lady as she's being intaked into jail. And they better not cut these damn, these faux locks out this girl hair and strip her naked. Tyler Perry, don't get the set tripping now. That's all I'm going to say about that because we literally get little to no info about it. Sabrina is in the, in the episode for literally a hot second. 
Now, the stuff that do matter. Karen is at the hospital, and child, we're going to get to episode three before this damn doctor come in. But in the, in the meantime, we get Pam who brought her there, and Pam's talking about how she inspires her, and she's trying to way uh, brush aside Karen's fears and reassure her, and I love this for them. Pam really showed up in this episode. She can keep her mouth shut now. She's going to support um, Karen and just pour really positive words of affirmation over her, and we love this for her. Karen's mama pops back up, and this is the one character that I have been waiting to see again. I am so excited about her. I love the perspective that she provides. I love that she doesn't judge Karen and not knowing who's the baby daddy. I love the support that she that I feel from her to Karen. She needs it because her sisters is not it. Throughout this episode, like once we get to later on, uh, Andy pops up at the salon because she's been calling Karen all day. And she ain't calling Karen all day to check on her. She's calling Karen all day to, to try to update her on her bullshit-ass Gary drama. And, girl, Karen got some other things going on. And by God, Miss Molly, sure, take care of yourself. But these sisters have been really, really selfish. A lot of the situations that they're in are real for them, which is cool. But then y'all also are creating a lot of this, this drama for your damn self. And Karen is dealing with some real, real sh So Andy, don't nobody give a damn about your latest update with Gary because you shouldn't have been with him to begin with. Like literally from the jump. You knew he was married from the jump. So why are we here? We're not doing this anymore. So I'm so glad that Karen's mom is back in the picture because she needs the support. Between Karen's mom and her parents and then Aaron's overly protective ass, Karen gonna be good. I don't believe that she is miscarrying this baby. I'm praying that once we do finally get the doctor up in here and, you know, we get further information on why she was bleeding and all that, it's tied to her actually having twins. Y'all, I need this story to come to be. And if you haven't checked this video out, I detail what I think this theory would be of like the troubling news that she receives right here. Click the link in the description box down below or the card above so that you can check out that video um again i talk about it in depth and i can't wait i can't wait like i pray that that's really what it's going to be because i think that that would just take sisters to the next level baby and i talk in detail about what the twins will be and all of that so go and watch that video now aaron is looking for karen in this episode because she ain't answering the phone and then he runs into to andy because she's also looking for her and andy takes this as an opportunity to kind of like i ain't telling you sh because you told gary to sue me and it's like girl you know that he ain't tell him that but go ahead and try to make fetch happen what i don't like is aaron we get it you are a nice guy you are a pastor you try real hard you got empathy and sh but gary is the damn devil the devil stop trying to make fetch happen he literally spends so much time bigging up gary and like did you did you know about his mama and his past and this and that and i know he makes a bunch of mistakes but he's a really good person at heart he's the devil that's it and yes the devil was once an angel but then he became the devil and now he's wreaking havoc over all of our lives here on earth absolutely the hell not Aaron just stay quiet baby stay quiet because you about to we were so close to being ushered completely out of the Gary and Andy hell era and now you want to walk us back into the Gary and Andy hellscape 2.0 and I hate that for us you're gonna cost yourself your position on this damn show and your position in like me being okay with Karen being with your ass because of your associations and this goes to like what I've been saying about Zach and his friends too like Y'all, you just have to align with your friends. You can't just be out here being friends with anybody and caping for anybody. How the hell are you the preacher man and you love the Lord and you got empathy? Meanwhile, you want to be out here advocating for a raggedy ass Negro with anger issues and control problems and abusive tendencies. The math ain't mathing, Aaron. And you're going to get your ass cussed out, Mr. Preacher Man. I'm sorry, y'all. But I'm really not because Aaron really made me mad. Like, I want him to, you know, find Karen and be supportive and all that. He's still applying pressure this season. And there's something coming, y'all. I have the synopsis on ericavane.com. But there's something coming where some random girl pops up and talk about she his girlfriend. So, a Aaron, Aaron, aside from this applying pressure, you trying to support the hell out of Karen. Don't bring no extra drama into her life. Only drama that you get to bring is that you are overprotective. Anything else, you will get cut with the swiftness, baby, because we are protecting Karen and our babies at all costs. Period. Before the episode ends, 
Andy tries to have a little moment with Pam, like, okay, that boy is gone. Now tell me where Karen is. And she's like, no, I ain't telling you either. Because guess what? Pam is really about that protect Karen life. Pam is really uh, Karen's friend. Now go on, Andy, with your cute-ass suit. Go home. Mm-hmm. And that's all I got, y'all. Those are my thoughts on the episode, my full breakdown. Let me know what you thought about that premiere episode. I am coming with my preview for next week. I can't wait to talk... I can't wait to talk predictions with y'all because the little teaser is given, at least for me. Are y'all watching Zatima? If you are a sister's fan, let me know. I have my breakdowns for that. Uh, episodes 1 through 8 on the channel. I'll link them in the description box down below as well. And let's chop it up. It's your good sis. You let us talk TP with, and I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye.